Hello friends, it is Editing Dingle here. If you're ever wondering what I look like on the days where I'm sitting at my computer and editing, hi. But I just wanted to pop on here real quick before the start of the vlog and let you know that I would consider this vlog more of a two-parter. The first part is yes, decorating the dining room and show you guys the transformation that our dining room has gone through. I'm really excited about that and I love showing you guys that content. I love decorating, you know that. So I do love making videos on that type of thing. But for the second part, I wanted to show you guys something that I have been working on for the past few weeks that is very, very close to my heart. So I wanted to share it with you all because I do know that it it could also touch a few of the community members right now that are going through something very similar. This project is the most important project that I have ever had the pleasure of working on in my entire life, I would say. I can seriously confidently say that. It is a little bit deeper and it is a little more serious than decorating a dining room. So if you're not into that, I won't be offended. Don't watch that part. It is deep. It is sad, but there's some really good in it. So thank you for those of you who do stick around for part two. I so appreciate you, but yeah, that's just a little disclaimer that this vlog is two parts. I'd love it if you stick around for part two, and yeah. Okay, let's just hop right into it. Hey guys! <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. It is Dingle here, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing super, super, super duper. I hope y'all are doing super, super duper well. Guys, if you're ever wondering, oh, she left. She totally knew I was going to expose her on the vlog. If you're ever wondering what lunch or any meal looks like, <laughs> look, she's. <laughs> I closed one door, and that's exactly where she wants to go. Hippo is always staring at me whenever I'm eating. Like, no joke, I'm eating like a flipping salad. What she really wanted was the chicken that was on this plate. She's not a sweet potato gal, so that couldn't be it. But anyway, welcome to today's vlog. This seems like a mukbang as well. If you are new to our channel, hello, my name is Mac Dingle, M-A-C-D-I-N-G-L-E. My husband and I moved to Portland, Maine in October of last year and settled in our apartment the first week of November, I wanna say. And I honestly can't believe it's already February like where the freak has the time gone. But another fun fact is this apartment is nearly twice the size as we had in Seattle. We moved from Seattle. I forgot to mention that. I've never had this much space before in my entire life. I don't own it, we're renting, but like I've never had this much space to decorate or to furnish. So it's been an adventure. I would say we did the living room first and then the dining room is pretty much good to go. There is the last piece of decor that we're gonna lay down today. I'm really excited if you guys watched our balance Valentine's Day vlog. I think it was literally the last video that we uploaded. Our rug came. That's what's up in the background right there. It's our rug and I'm so excited because there's always going to be like knickknacks and new centerpieces and like new things that like we want to switch out here and there, but it's pretty much set. I really like how it's looking. I just can't wait to get our rug down because when we did our living room, I was so amazed at what a difference one rug could make to a room. You guys are probably tired of me saying this, but in our Connecticut apartment, it was all carpet. So we didn't really see the need to put rugs down. I didn't understand how much of a difference it could make to a space. Even if you lay rugs on top of carpet, that could be a really cute look to like spice up a space, but I just didn't know that back then. And then in Seattle, we had hardwood floors and there's a couple of things. One, I don't like to spend a chunk of money on one item. It kills me inside. Like to spend over a hundred dollars on any one thing. I'm like, oh, come on. That's so much money for like not a lot of stuff, if that makes sense. And then the other thing is it takes me for flipping ever to actually make a decision on something that big. Again, 100 to 300 ish dollars or so might not seem like a lot to some people, but when you've got goals and you've got savings goals and things like that, and you're just like, I can't believe I spent that much money on like one thing, it kind of kills me inside, but to see the difference it makes in a space, I've always said, and I've always told Jack, I would give up location within reason, with totally within reason, but like the specific street or the specific address of like where I live within a city that I like, it doesn't really matter to me. As long as it's not like in the middle of completely nowhere, you know, but as long as the space is cozy and I love coming home to it and it's bright, it's airy, and I love how we decorated it. It does so much for how I feel throughout the day and it does so much for how much I look forward to coming home and how much time I want to spend in our space that we pay monthly rent for, you know? 
so I really love to invest in making the space feel really cozy. So with that said, I'm gonna roll a clip from our empty apartment tour so you can kind of see the total space that we're dealing with. Initially, I didn't like this wallpaper, but then when we started getting our own stuff into it, I definitely warmed up to it. At first, I thought it was very grandma-y, and I still kind of think it is a little bit. I wouldn't choose it for myself, but again, with like our own stuff in it, and pulling out the golds within the wallpaper, I've really enjoyed doing that, and then keeping up with the neutrals of the trim that we have here it's not stark white it's definitely a cream color so pulling in those neutrals and those golds and the natural woods into the room i really enjoyed at the end we'll do a full before and after so you can see like the overviews and things like that but here's how the room is now get my dirty dishes out of here so you guys can see so here's our living room i mean it's not completely clean or put together or anything like that but then when you turn you can see like straight down through the apartment obviously you guys have seen it a thousand times and then here's the state of the dining room right now. So we have a cute little bookshelf. There are little things that I would like to change or even bigger pieces of furniture. Ideally, I would have some sort of, I don't know, like more like an accent table here, but I digress. We have a little bookshelf here. There are little things that we would change about the decor as we go through. I do like this lamp here. And then when you turn, I just love how everything is coming together. I love this table and chair set came from my parents. They weren't using it. They keep a lot of their old furniture from when they lived in Massachusetts. And then and they moved up to Maine full time. So they had two houses full of furniture that they needed to like combine into one. So they kept a lot of good pieces from the old house when they moved, thinking that us kids would want some of them. And I'm so glad that they did. And then in the back here, I need like some seat cushions. Again, little things will change. I need some seat cushions for these like extra chairs back here, but I love the look of the wicker. If you asked me like two years ago, if I like these, I wanted to like get rid of them, but I'm so glad we kept them. And now they can be extra seats if we ever need them. I don't, I don't know when we would ever need this many chairs in my life. Like I don't think I have that many friends in this area whatsoever. And then having this cute little side table, the side table originally went into the living room, but when we redecorated and added the rug, and stuff it wasn't needed in there so this is just a cute little reading nook area and then I have a few things in the living room that I'm going to transfer to these shelves to just fill them up during Christmas it was full to the brim and now it looks completely naked here are the candlesticks though that I thrifted the other day and I'm really pumped about that and I cleaned them and I kind of wish I didn't because I liked them dirtier but they were kind of nasty so I need to look up how to make copper look a little bit more worn there's definitely a way to do it and just like oxidize them and speed it up because because science, you know? And yeah, that's what we're looking at. And then this rug, if you guys can see, it's like an ivory woven with a seagrassy tight. It's not definitely seagrass, but it's like, you know, kind of that burlapy type of vibe. And then I hope I measured right. In one of the previous vlogs, I showed you guys that I was measuring for rugs or I like updated you that I was measuring for rugs. But initially I thought that we were gonna need like a six by nine, but the six would have had it coming way too far into like this lane and I wanna keep this kind of clear like as like a walking area I'd rather not a rug spilling over into this plane you know so what I did I didn't realize that rugs came in a five by eight but they do but not every rug does but this one specifically did and I was really pumped about it the only thing is I'm nervous that eight won't be enough nine would have definitely been enough ideally I wouldn't like chairs like kind of half hanging off a rug you know and like the rug stop there it just doesn't frame up a space as nicely as I want to I sound crazy but I love interior design over the years, I've come to know a bunch of this stuff, especially through Pinterest and my mom, who's amazing at decorating. You've seen her house and it's just like in me. So these little things are the stuff that like I notice when I walk into a room. So enough blabbing. Let's move this furniture out of the way so we can lay this rug down. And I probably have to sweep actually. We swept yesterday, but you know, cats. So, okay, let's just get to it. I can feel my body, you're cold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me, look at me deceiving. Let you get the best of me, in bed with my worst enemy. This is a no pro, I just can take cold. This is a danger zone, back up and get me home. This is a no pro, I just can take cold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me So put your hand in mine Follow me Let me waste your time Set up me Do some stupid shit Take a seat Let me waste your time So be so put your Should we have gotten a 6x9? It might look a little bit small 
What do you feel? Do you think it looks a little bit small? I feel like it doesn't tip make like the impression I wanted like the dining room or the living room did. Yeah. You know? I feel like, honestly, the living room, because it's such an interesting space, I almost feel like we would have to cover the entire room for it to have that kind of effect. You mean for the dining room, you said living room. Sorry, yeah. For it to have that impact. I think it still has an impact. Or, like, it's just get a smaller. It's cute. It's cute. I just, I do think a six by nine, because a six by nine would have come out a little bit longer here and a little bit more this way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It fits it. It fits it. Like, it fits the whole entire table. It does. I love how this room in here, this comes out so far and it like fills the entire space. So I guess I was expecting that. It looks a little bit small, especially on camera it does. So I'm going to insert clips before and after. I'm a completely empty one again. You can see the entire room and what it looked like. Completely empty when we were doing the empty apartment tour. And then now with all the furniture, the bookshelf, the rug, etc. I love the quality of the rug. It is much softer than I thought it was going to be because it's it is that burlapy kind of material so I was like maybe it might be rough a little bit but it's actually a lot softer than I thought and it's a lot less brown than I thought I knew that there could be a chance that it would look way more brown than it does because of the burlap type of straw material that it has in it but the ivory throughout it that's woven in is just coming out way more than the brown of like the burlapy material so I love it I hate returning things it is the biggest hassle in the entire world I am the worst when it comes to fashion subscription boxes because you have to physically like go to the store and like drop off to return stuff. It's not hard, it's just a life admin -y thing and I don't do life admin things. Taxes are my worst nightmare whatsoever. Insurance, being the doctor, like everything like that is just like the worst thing I could ever put on my to-do list. So Jack said to send him the website and see about returning it because I would love to exchange it for a six by nine, just bite the bullet. Five by eight was cheap. Like I think we got it for like 90 something dollars marked down from like 300 and something dollars. Like it was a crazy deal. I got it on rugsusa.com. I will link this rug below if it's something that you guys are interested in. At least you can see what a five by eight looks like in the space that we have compared to our bodies too. You can kind of look when we were setting it up. But I think I couldn't have gone wrong. Like Jack was saying with the six by nine, I wanted to fill the space a little bit more. It is adorable. I think I really want a six by nine. Hello, I thought I'd come into the living room for this last segment of the vlog. It really has nothing to do with living rooms, dining rooms, decor, rugs, anything of that nature. It's actually a lot heavier than that. So I honestly haven't planned on like what information or what things I'm gonna say about this are. However, I have really, really enjoyed being able to upload more often for you all. I feel very connected. I think I've explained this a million times during Vlogmas when I was uploading every single day. I feel like you were getting an insight into our honestly daily lives and we were able to joke about daily happenings. It almost became like inside jokes between you guys and me and it was really fun. And by still uploading three times a week, I feel like I've been able to continue doing that. Like I got to reference Valentine's Day because I know that vlog is going up today and you guys are seeing this this week on Wednesday. So it's really been nice to know how connected you guys are in our lives. I don't know, I think that's really fun. I think the number one thing seriously I enjoyed about YouTube and I didn't expect to get out of YouTube when I started this was the feeling of community and the feeling of connection between me and the viewers like that's just not something that really crossed my mind but I'm so so glad that it came about if that makes sense but I want to let you in on something that I have been working on for the past couple of weeks it's honestly one of the top important and impactful projects that I have worked on in my entire life. This is gonna get a little bit heavy, so if you're not into that, please click off, I won't be offended. But a couple weeks or three weeks or even four weeks or so ago, one of my absolute best friends from college, her name is Chrissy, she was in my wedding as a bridesmaid. She was one of my best friends throughout school, seriously like super, super close to my heart. She reached out to me and asked if I would do the video that's going to be shown at the Steven Vanover Foundation benefit this year. It's called Flights to Fight Cancer. And 
I'll go into the personal connection with this foundation in just a moment, but the Steven Vanover Foundation was founded to help raise money and awareness for sarcoma, which is a form of cancer. And personally, having been touched by several family members in the past who have had cancer, who have fought cancer, who have lost the fight against cancer, I was so touched that she reached out to me to do the video that's going to be shown at their benefit this year. I was seriously so grateful in that moment that content creation has led me to places such as being able to do content creation and actually work as a contractor for companies, being able to do content creation with Twitch and YouTube and all of those things that I'm personally super invested in. And now for a nonprofit foundation to reach out to me in order to do the video for their yearly benefit. It was just like the coolest moment. I was like, this content creation thing is happening everywhere. And I have so many opportunities because of it. And I just felt so grateful. So thank you so much, Chrissy, if you're watching this. It was so cool to work on something like this for such an amazing cause. It just felt so good to use the skills that I've curated over the years for something as amazing as the Stephen Vanover Foundation. Because I knew even if it was in the tiniest, littlest way, it was making some sort of difference. And it just, that's just, it's good. It's a good feeling. So the personal tie to this foundation it's a little rough, my friends. It's a little rough. So I remember back in, I'm getting like chills right now. I remember during senior year of college, Chrissy had taken us. She had alluded to something tough that the family was going through, like her family. And she was gone a few weekends in a row where she was like at home and she was gonna tell us because she wasn't letting a lot of information out, which completely makes sense. Now knowing what was happening with their family, it like, they needed to take the time to digest it. But it was on a weekend, I wanna say it was like a Sunday even, and we had gone, I believe it was to like Burger King or McDonald's, but she had let us know her sister's very serious boyfriend who would soon after be her fiance, the love of her life. This guy has been in her family for as long as she could remember. They literally consider him a brother in their family of three girls. She's one of three sisters. He's the older brother to Chrissy. He's the older brother to Chrissy's younger sister and now he is the fiance to Chrissy's older sister. So such an integral part of her family. And I had met Steven a few times because during college when you're far away from home, the friends that you make in college, their families kind of become your family away from family. So I knew Chrissy's sisters and I would go over the house and her parents are incredible. We went to the Derby a few times together, the Kentucky Derby. And it was just like, whenever we were in Louisville, that's where we would go hang out. We'd hang out at Chrissy's house. And so I remember I remember meeting Steven a few times and he was always just so fun. He was so fun and he was so nice and he treated Chrissy's older sister like an absolute queen and he was just amazing. Like he truly felt like an integral part of the family. He would just be chilling at the counter. He would be hanging out. He'd come over, he'd walk in without knocking. You know, it was just one of those type of relationships that was really special and really rare to come by. That Sunday when we were sitting in McDonald's, Chrissy had let us know that he was diagnosed I want to say it was stage three sarcoma. It started in one place of his body and it was quickly spreading. And like when she told us this, it was shocking. It was very scary. But at the same time, we were so young. So we all felt, and I believe at that point, Chrissy also had felt that he was going to beat it. And it was months and months. I don't know the specific timeline, but at some points I remember it seemed like he was gonna get better. And then in other times it was clear that nothing was going to get better. And then I want to say it was late 2014 or early 2015. He had already been in the hospital for a really long time. Towards the end, which they weren't sure if it was the end, you never really know until a certain point, I suppose. But Chrissy had texted, everyone knew what was coming, but it had happened all so fast, you know? Like he was always in the hospital and he was always out of the hospital and he was always in the hospital. And then all of a sudden, it's almost like, you know, the last time he was in the hospital was the last time and it just kind of happened, you know? I remember getting the text from Chrissy and then I remember um, that next morning, I didn't think it would affect me that bad, you know? Like he wasn't an integral part of my life directly, but I knew how important he was to Chrissy's family. And it was also the first time that somebody around my age had gone way too quickly. It was the first time that somebody around my age's life was taken so fast. And that's really scary when that happens because you don't think that 
somebody who's as healthy as Stephen was, who exercised, who ate decent, he never smoked. He was living a life that was so similar to the one that I also lived as far as like health and eating and non-smoking and all that stuff and, the, and cancer took him and it was so sad. It was, it was horrible. So, <laughs> I don't know if I painted that picture very well whatsoever, but hopefully you can see just how much it meant for Chrissy to reach out for me to do a video for the Stephen Vanover Foundation for their benefit this year because I know how much his life impacted their family and their family means so much to me and I'm just so glad I could be part of it. So thank you, thank you so much. That was a whole mess, it probably didn't make any sense. <laughs> Quite honestly, but I tried. But with that said, I am gonna roll this video for you guys, which was a huge collaboration between me and Chrissy and everyone else who was working on the foundation and who was tied to the video. They were so amazing. They got me like outlines and assets and clips and like all this stuff. It was truly such a collaboration. Get it to where it ended up, but I really wanted to share this with you. And for anyone who has also been touched by cancer, whether you personally have gone through something like this, whether you're fighting right now, whether your family is going through this, whether you've lost somebody to cancer. I'm gonna roll the video and you can find a link in the description below if you want to support the Stephen Vanover Foundation. Seriously, just listening to me and watching the video and hearing his story is absolutely amazing support. But of course, they are always looking for donations to fight this horrible, horrible disease that still does not have a cure. Again, I will leave that link below if that is something that is close to your heart and you would like to support. Without further ado, here is the most important project that I've had the pleasure of being a part of thus far in the content creation space. Okay, I'm just gonna roll it.
usually don't like to get super emotional or deep or serious on this channel but I just really wanted to include that again so you guys can see the stuff that is super important to me and the stuff that I've been working on the past few weeks it's just really cool to be able to share that on this platform with you all thank you for decorating my dining room with me and thank you for seeing what I've been working on it really means the world to me but thank you all for watching if you enjoyed this video do not forget to give this a big old thumbs up and if you are new do not forget to subscribe we post every single Monday Wednesday and Friday my friends and with that I will see you on Friday everyone see you later bye